For uscfootball.com, I'm Keely Yor here with Dan Weber for instant analysis of USC's Tuesday practice of Utah Week. Now, Tuesday practices are usually offensive days, but today, because it's a week earlier, it's a defensive day. And the word of the day was tackling. That was the big question that we kept asking players and coaches. How do you improve tackling? Because that was something that was the Trojans struggled in in the BYU game. And Dan, you got to talk to multiple people about that. Yeah, they say we uh, we work on those drills every week. And so the question is, oh, are you doing more of them or doing new ones? Or, and they said, no, we're just doing the same drills. And we think uh, our coaches, you know, have a good game plan and we're going to be able to keep them, you know, keep in our lanes and we'll be able to. And I said, but how do you get them on the ground? How is that? And they they're just hoping that those drills uh, you know, are good enough, that that, they, um, that, that gives them enough ability to, to take people down. Uh, and I know that they said, that, you know, we're working on uh, widening our stances and getting under control and things like that, but basically doing it in drills. And, you know, the live action, when you're, you're facing um, guys like Utah's got, uh, yeah. probably hard to replicate in drills. Yeah, and that's what I was going to ask you. If you're not going full speed, full contact in practice, and I know it's a short week, so maybe they don't want to do that, but if you're not doing that, how are you going to be prepared to face elite runners and elite athletes like Zach Moss and, and Tyler Hundley? Really good question. <laughs> really good question. I mean, they're obviously, uh, for USC people who remember that USC got 171 yards uh, with their, their entire rushing game and felt pretty good about it. Uh, Zach Moss, by himself, uh, ran up uh, for 187 yards against, against BYU. So, you know, you know what you're getting. He's really, 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 really good. I mean, you just can't say it enough. And Hundley is uh, the most athletic two-way quarterback uh, that USC is going to see. So, uh, uh, this is going to be a challenge. Uh, earlier in the year, you, you'd have thought this is a game where you kind of got to outscore him. You just got to get the air raid going. Uh, you know, when JT was still here. Uh, you're thinking they just got to put up a lot of points, score every time, um, and match uh, match Utah. If the if the defense throws a good game, if they really do uh, figure out how to get Hundley on the ground, how to you know keep um, uh, Zach Moss under control, and tackling is going to be a big part of this, and, yep. and gang tackling uh, with Moss especially, um, you know then they've got a chance. But this is a this is a tough matchup for USC's defense, a really tough matchup. Yeah, without a doubt. So in that sense, what's the strategy here? Do you try and go all out to stop both uh, mobile guys or and for, force them to beat you with their arm? Or how, how do you approach this? Sounds pretty good, yeah, yeah. right there. And I, they say Hundley's uh, you know, downfield uh, ability is, is much improved. He hasn't had to do that that much. They have one, you know, one receiver who is just sensational. They all... You know, Elijah Griffin was saying, he, you know, he's the best uh, they've seen. And so it's not an easy uh, fix if you say we're just going to make him beat us with, with his arm. Yeah. And they haven't defended uh, real athletic quarterbacks on the edge. They haven't defended the edge or real athletic quarterbacks. So now you got uh, in a quarterback and a running back that can uh, attack where you're weakest. So... Yeah. Uh, the uh, development of the defense this week is really, really important and probably determine how this game goes. Yeah, without a doubt. And speaking of development, I got to talk to defensive backs coach Greg Burns about the development of the young uh, secondary, those youthful players. And he said, I wouldn't, I don't want to call them young anymore because they have played games, they have some experience under their belt, but he did say that they're going through some growing pains. And you got to talk to Elijah Griffin about those growing pains and how they're learning from them. Yeah, he said the growing pains are basically making small mistakes. But he said the small mistakes, you know, when you're playing where they they are, can turn out to be a big mistake. Uh, and he said we just gotta, and we gotta eliminate those uh, those small mistakes. And and so we're working on it. We're we know what they are. We're doing it. You know, we just have to uh, eliminate them and uh, the best we can. And. And you'll see, I mean, you'll know at game time, um, uh, have they been able to eliminate them or not? I think they know uh, what they have to do. Uh, do they get the ability in practice in a week like this to do it enough? I think, yeah. I think it's the knowing it is one thing, identifying it is one thing, categorizing it is one thing, doing it is another whole different thing. And that ability to do it, I mean, uh, Utah's going to make it uh, – make it tough uh, because they're so athletic at the 
at uh, three key spots. Yeah, and that's what I was going to ask you, because basically there wasn't any new re revelation from talking to the defensive coaches or players today. They all know the task that, that Utah faces or j the challenge that they are. But how do you do that if you're on a short week, you had challenges against BYU, and you, it sounds like they're not really fundamentally changing anything in practice. How do you expect a different result come Friday? Well, that's a, yeah, that, Sorry. it's a great question. Uh, you're hoping that they grow up. You're hoping that from one game to the next, they kind of play themselves, uh, that, that they, they get enough out of uh, what happened in the Brigham Young game to be able to carry that over to the Utah game. Uh, whether enough is happening on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of this week, for example, on the practice field, I guess is the big question, because that you could carry over as well. It does look like this team doesn't always have uh, the benefit of taking a lot of what they actually do on the practice field to the game. Uh, that's always been kind of the challenge for the uh, for this this staff is yeah. to figure out how do, what do we do in practice to make it really relevant uh, to what's going to happen in the game. Yeah. As far as injuries go, we didn't get to talk to Clay Hilton today because uh, we don't talk to him on the second practice week. Uh, but we did see notable injuries, or at least people not practicing. Amon Ross St. Brown was out. Uh, Isaac Taylor Stewart was out as well. Andrew Vore, he's still de dealing with that foot issue. I, I did talk to Greg Burns, though. He said that he expects uh, Greg Johnson to play on Friday. He was out with concussion protocol. And then uh, he said ITS should be fine as well. So those guys, uh, it looks like it might have been just some, some rest days for some guys, considering it's a short week. Yeah. and I, I, I'm always suspicious when you see them with the hoodie and hoodie up and all that, and it's kind of a, a warm day. Uh, that maybe they're just sick. You know, okay. I mean, we're just guessing. I mean, we're totally, totally just guessing. But uh, that always could be a possibility. Yeah. And uh, uh, as far as Amon Ra, well, I don't think we got a clue. Yeah. As to what's going on there, so we'll find out from Clay tomorrow. But uh, that was a surprise, considering he was like the last guy on the field yesterday. I mean, he was on, you know, working on the jug machine and all that so late, we didn't even get to talk to him. And then here he is, uh, not able to dress out. Maybe he was sick too. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, having Isaac Taylor Stewart back is, is pretty important, I think. Uh, you don't want to go into the game. And, and Greg Johnson certainly looked like he was ready. I don't know if it, I couldn't tell. That's a quick comeback from concussion protocol. Yeah. So, uh, but he, he didn't, you know, watching him run by and all that, he did not look like he was hurt. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see about that. So we're, we're kind of just speculating on injuries. So a guy who seems to be good to go is Christian Rector. Uh, he practiced this week as far as we know. Uh, but, Dan, let's go to predictions. What are you predicting this week for Friday? It's a, such an important matchup for USC, not only just because they, they need to win after a BYU loss, but for the Pac-12 South, this pretty much decides it in certain years. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those ones where – you're hoping, uh, if you're a USC fan, you're hoping that the jinx continues. I mean, it's only been four games that, uh, in history that Utah has played at the Coliseum. They haven't won a game in L.A. since, uh, I think, 1916 was their last time they won in L.A. So if you're a USC fan, you're saying, oh, man, do something, give me a break, you know, whatever. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they'll they'll uh, look up in the stands and see Reggie Bush and these were, these kids were all you know in grade school when Reggie was the you know the superstar here and maybe that'll maybe they'll put Reggie's uh, some of those action uh, video stuff from on the on the video board and things like that. that. <laughs> I don't. We don't know how that's going to work. Well, okay. Are they allowed to do that or not? I don't even know if they are, but uh, I think this would be a, a game where they have to get really emotional, really fired up. Uh, still be under control, and they pretty much have to score most of their possessions yep. against the Utah defense that's got some real talent up front. Now, if they can get rid of the ball quickly enough, I mean, what I would think you would want to do is try to match them, match them, match them, and at the very end, as has happened the last couple of times here, USC does something right and Utah does something wrong. You know, that's uh, – I'm probably not going to go there. Uh, I mean, you would – you would think Utah has a chance to win like 31-28 or something like yeah. that. That would be, that would be probably the smart pick. Although, I think the Utah people were all kind of uh, flummoxed by the fact that um, ESPN, with their power rankings this week, adjusted after last weekend, still has USC a slight favorite. So, 
uh, Utah people were like, how, what, what's that? Yeah. Uh, after the way they handled BYU and the way USC uh, didn't handle BYU. So, yeah. you know, it's all about matchups. If, uh, if the Utah kids think that, okay, we're playing the team that played BYU, if USC isn't that team, maybe uh, that changes things, uh, but we'll see. I mean, yep. the team that played Stanford, even though Stanford obviously is not a typical Stanford team, if that team shows up, USC's probably got a chance if they can uh, they can convert and they can be uh, precise. And uh, uh, I don't think we have any idea. They've got an 18-year-old quarterback. Yep. It's his, what, third start yep. in his life. So yep. we'll and, see. Yep, and you previewed what I was going to talk about next. Uh, Reggie Bush, Matt Leiner, and Urban Meyer are going to be in the Coliseum on Friday. They're part of the Fox uh, crew who's broadcasting the game. They're going to be in the pregame and postgame show, but their whole uh, uh, setup is going to be on the Coliseum field, which means the return of Reggie Bush in the Coliseum, which we don't really know the logistics of. Like, can USC even show him on the board? It's a lot of questions. And then Urban Meyer, who some USC fans want to be the next head coach at USC, is going to be there. That might be awkward or weird or not sure but there's a lot of question marks with this fox crew coming into the coliseum yeah that's that's like the most intrigue you could possibly have in a single football game anywhere at any time when you've got the usc fans choice for the next coach and the guy that's been banished for nine years and most usc fans think that was total uh you know just as unfair as anything uh, the ncaa could have possibly done so to have those, either one of those is a giant story. To have them both together, yeah. I mean, although I, I was thinking, if you're on that Fox uh, uh, panel, it's like, I mean, Matt Leinart is like a throw-in. He's <laughs> going into the Rose Bowl Hall of Fame. He yeah. just got announced, and he's like, who? And then the other two guys, nobody will even know their name. They could have paper bags over their heads. It isn't going to matter because all anybody's going to care about are you know Reggie and Urban. Yeah, I'd be interesting. Who will be more of a focus uh, for USC fans, Reggie or Urban? I don't, I don't know. I yeah. mean, it's but to have those t two storylines, I mean, Fox is probably pretty lucky to get this game yeah. because there will be people turning in just to see how's this working. Yeah, it's a fascinating dynamic to see play out on Friday. So stay tuned for that. But Dan, before we wrap it up here, any final thoughts? For we wrap it up on a short Utah week, an important Utah week. Any final thoughts? This is a pretty big deal for yep. USC. I, I think considering their next two games are at Washington and at Notre Dame, yep. this is really a big deal. And they've got to grow up. Um, they, they've got to you know, not do some of the things they did at BYU. And they've got to come out and, you know, Brandon Peely was talking about, you know, we've got to come out excited. We, yep. we can't just come out and just come out. Uh, and said that just doesn't work. But why that happened at Brigham Young, I don't think they even know yet. But uh, I don't think there's any doubt about this week. They know what has to happen this week. So, yeah. so we'll see what what the, what are they made of? What do they have? How good are they? Um, there are no excuses like oh we didn't realize Brigham Young was going to come out and punch us in the mouth and be that good. Uh, they know how good Utah is. Yep. It'll be a test for sure. All right, that's going to wrap it up for U USC's Tuesday practice. I almost said Wednesday. Have it. Uh, that's Dan Weber. I'm Keely Yor. For more, check out uscfootball.com.